Hello fellow tinkerers, welcome to tutorial 2b of the multi-material single mesh series. We are going to dynamically create buttons for our color picker widget. These buttons will automatically name themselves with the slot name to which they refer. Right, let's get into it. So we're just going to bring up our material that we've been working on. Uh, I'm just going to duplicate our widget. I'm going to call this dynamic button. And then we are going to go into user interfaces, widget blueprint, user widget. I'm going to call this button template. So we just need to add a button. We don't have to add a canvas or anything. And we are going to create an on-clicked event for our button we just made. And in our event graph, we can now create a event dispatch. I'm going to call this button on clicked template. So you want to differentiate it from button on clicked as it can be confusing later on. Now I need to compile and we can now add an input. It's going to be an integer and we're going to call this index and we can now drag in our event dispatcher. We want to call it and it has our index. What we now want to do is right click and promote to variable. Connect up the execution pin. And we need to click on our index in our variable section. And we want to go to instance editable. And we also want to go expose on spawn. Compile, save. And that's our button set up. Now you could put a text box in here but I'm just going to create everything on spawn. So we can close that, we don't need that anymore. Now I'm just going to go to my new variation of my widget. Now we want to add a wrap box. I'm just going to roughly make it the same size as the other one because I know it's going to have the same amount of buttons. You're going to want to Anchor it to the bottom left. Uh, I'm just going to keep both in case people are following the tutorial and don't want to do it this way. Um, so we can still work for everyone. Now I'm just going to keep this called wrap box. Just so it's easy to realize what we're referring back to. Alright, with our wrap box created, we're going to head over to our graph. Um, if you wanted to, you could just delete all of this. But if you you can keep it going. What um, we are going to be doing is this is our character this is our character that we've been working on and we've got all the slots here. When you automatically create the text it uses what's in the slot name so this doesn't look very nice. What you can do is I've just duplicated it and all I have done is you can change it in the slot name but just bear in mind if you change it and you press the back button it doesn't change that back it actually changes the material you can just control Z to put that back and so what you can do is you can actually have spaces in there and it still works fine so that just makes it look a lot nicer on the other end when you create your button and so when we create our button, it's going to refer to the slot name. It's actually going to read the slot name and create the button text as the slot name as referred to here. But just to keep it consistent for this, I am going to keep this as my button names. Uh, and you would have noticed the thumbnail has these nice ones just because I set that up to look good. But for the sake of following through with the tutorial with the, the last tutorial we did, 
but I'm just going to keep them like this. But again, bear in mind, you can change them to look better. Now we need to get player character. You can actually use get player pawn or character, they both work. And from this, I'm going to cast, I'm just going to write multi. And that's the, the blueprint of my character. So as our character blueprint, we want to get slot names. So just make sure you don't choose the parented mesh uh, if you're following exactly what I'm doing. Otherwise you can. But our, we've got our character set up to be a child of the parent mesh. So I've got to choose the correct character. Promote this to a variable. And we connect the execution pin. Note that it is current type array of names. So what this will do is reach into our character and pull out a whole list of material slots. So we are going to refer off this list and create a for each loop. We need to create a widget. We are going to create our budget wid widget that we made. Might be easier just to get our button temp and input it. Now the reason why we do this is because we need our index here and it's going to loop and create an index for our button so that when we click a button it knows where it needs to go. But if you don't create a new button from a widget and you just do it from within this blueprint every time you update that index it updates the actual index in your variable in this blueprint and you can only ever return the final index so if you have clicked the last button or the first button you will still get the same index the whole way through so this is how you create a new button widget for each material slot and then that button gets assigned an index independently of this blueprint otherwise yeah it will just get overwritten every time here we are now going to construct object from class we want a text block and this will be the text on the button. We are now going to set the text. So it is set text bracket text. Um, there's another one if you're not in context sensitive that doesn't work. And what we can do is go straight from our element that we're looping through the material slots. We're going to go array element and we're just going to populate that straight into straight into our text and that will convert it for us and that's how we populate the button with the name of the material slot automatically now we will drag off the button widget and we want to add a child we can just go add child and then select our wrap box so not here Okay, so we need to make sure our wrap box is set to variable. Compile and save. 
and you'll see rep box underscore zero. So now when I go to So this will come out there. And we will select our rep box, get. And we also need to add another child. Go add child. So this will be our target. So we've got our child. So context is the text and the target is the button. So now we are going to find our button on clicked event that we made for our event dispatcher. Find event button on clicked temp. And if you don't see that on your list to call, then go back to your button and compile and save it and then come back to your widget and compile and save it again and then it should show up sometimes uh just have an issue with bringing it up for some reason so now we are just going to drag off i can just go add custom event and you'll notice that we have access to our index from this because we called specifically our event dispatch that we made in our button uh, if you just do a bind on whatever clicked event for your button that you made um, you won't have it unless you've got an event dispatcher here but again if you do that your index will always refer to the last one and your buttons just will always refer to the same output no matter which button you click I'm just going to leave that as default name so I'm just going to refer to some stuff we did in our last tutorial 2A where we made everything that we have done already up to this point. What I should really do here is when we created our list, I'm just going to name our material slot list to just that. Uh, now I know what we're referring to call out my material list and what we can do is just go get and you want to get a ref and what this will do is you can input an index which we've set up to give automatically at the index it will give the material slot and because we loop through the material list in a certain order creates that index for that order and we're referring to the same list and so therefore the index gives back the exact right material name that we want all we need to do next is we want to set our part name which is what we set up last time and it will convert that to a string for us and we run it so this is our event dispatch that we created on our button and so now it is allocated a index and saved in a specific instance of that button that's created for each button what i'm going to do to test this out um because i've got quite a lot of setting up on the other end just to test this out but for now we will just print string and I am going to print the name and for whatever reason I love having this read and over exaggerating the number compile save play You will see it has created auto generated our names got the facial hair got the skin 
and we're all set up for the next tutorial. Thanks.